Good afternoon, Grizzly Nation. I'm Josh Bean, and this is Grizzly News. And I'm Nikki Williams, bringing you the latest in campus news. Our baseball team faces off against Tennessee Wesleyan tomorrow at 3 p.m. down at the Grizzly Complex. It's going to be an interesting matchup as Tennessee is ranked fourth, while the Grizzlies are ranked fifth in the, in the division. The Grizzlies will be going on the road after a couple more games, so let's show up and support our teams. In other news, Green Light will be holding its Pajama Jam event Thursday night from 7 to 9 in the Elvis. It's supposed to be a fun event, so make sure to check it out. Now, last week, the Student Government Association held a town hall meeting to hear students' concerns and answer a few questions. Our SGA correspondent, Aaron Martin, went to the event as well to get some answers to our questions. He brings us this report. Good afternoon, Grizzlies. Today is February 16th. It's about 15 minutes after 2 p.m. And today I'm here at the SGA Grizzly Town Hall. Hopefully today I can get a few interviews with some of the centers to see what some of their plans are this semester. Hey there, Chairperson Sims. How are you doing today? I'm doing quite well, Mr. Bowden. Good to see you. Thank you for having me. Um, we have a couple. I have a couple questions, just pretty much about the SJ of this semester. What are some of the things that y'all plan as the Senate to work on this semester from the following semester? Mostly going to be working on our office hours, making sure we tackle social media, both online and offline, trying to unite the student body. Working on suggestion boxes as well, and just generally trying to unite the student campus. Okay, I know recently, I think it was about around December of last year, GGC was facing a lawsuit involving the free speech zones. And I know that was a bill that was being implemented by the Civil Rights and Social Justice Committee. Is there any, is there any plans for that bill to be changed or anything going in the future for that bill in particular? So for that bill, the free speech zone legislation, that was about stipulating on the free speech zones and about just the language herein. So we mostly just kind of revised the language a little bit to be more specific regarding uh, what could and could not be police. So that's been signed, that's been passed on. It'll be introduced to the Faculty Senate and I can get the decision back to you guys probably within two weeks or so. How are you doing, sir? I'm doing pretty good today, pretty good day. All right, tell me, what are some of the things that y'all plan on doing this semester as part of this committee? Well, as our president mentioned earlier, we're hoping to finish up the meditation room and have it fully operational by then, by March at the latest. After that, um, a couple of us are actually hoping to set up another one in the library. Um, it's not official yet, but we're looking into it, possibly opening up other rooms around campus, just because, you know, one room might not be enough space for all the students that might need it. And where is this um, meditation room supposed to be on campus? Uh, the one they're finishing up right now is in 3000 building. I believe 3107 was the room number, um, just so it's closer to 3000 lot, so that students can come in, come out, you know, finish their prayer and just go on with their day. Okay, and y'all have any plans for the ASGA thing? ASGA, that, uh, that's the regional conference for SGA uh, committees, and we have about six, seven students that are going there to represent us to go see what they can learn from that because previous experiences with the regional SGA committee meetings like that, having gone to it, we haven't really learned much, so we're really seeing if we can still, you know, get more things out of this. Tell me, where are the plans following the, um, the free speech bill that y'all plan on implementing and changing for this semester? Right, right, right. So, as you know, we passed a legislation uh, the committee passed it last semester um, that has been signed and been taken up to the faculty senate to see how it could be implemented on campus um, in short we just we acknowledge the right that every American has of uh, free speech, correct? And it's kind of a gray area on campuses, mostly because, you know, there's a lot of opportunity for disturbances, uh, whether you're in class or at a library or at a quiet reflection space, which the SGA just implemented. So it's, it's kind of a sticky, you know, situation, a conversation um, on how free speech zones work around any campus, anywhere in Georgia. Um, what we try to do with that legislation, what we're going to try to follow up is mostly to identify where these free speech zones are that are, are designated all around campus, but you know, students don't know about it. And so what we want to do is make it clear, whether it's with signage, notifications, or just publicizing, hey, these are the free speech zones, this is where you're free to speak your mind without disturbing students who might not be open to the free speech zones. Because again, it's a right. Um, so we just want to express and make sure that it's there 
for the students to use. Okay, and one last question. Do you all have any other bills or anything you are working on for this semester? One of the biggest initiatives right now that we're working on is, as you know, uh, last year during the legislative session, uh, la legislators brought up and the bill was vetoed by uh, Governor, um, but the campus carry bill, right? Um, so that's coming back up. Um, and, well, you know, and so that's going to be another conversation that's going to be talked about this semester. Um, and wh whatever direction it takes, we have to assume that, you know, this can potentially be law uh, in the state of Georgia that will affect college campus campuses around the USG. So what we need to do is inform our students and start that dialogue um, with this community to make sure that we understand what this bill does and if the bill is implemented, what do, what do we do as students to, you know, be comfortable with this, compromise, whatever it may be. We want to start that discussion. So that's our goal for this semester. All right, we are coming to a close here at the GGC SGA Town Hall, the 2017. We spoke to many um, senators here. We spoke to Omar Zanaga of the Public Service Committee. We also talked to Mike Guevara at the Social Justice and Civil Rights Committee. And we also were able to speak with Chairperson Joshua Sims. So please make sure to watch the ending of our broadcast here at GNN. Back to you, Josh. Thanks, Aaron. Now let us check in with Matthew for the weather. Good afternoon, GGC Nation. Well, so it looks like the winter weather is finally over. Um, so we'll expect some 60s in the 70s. And we got like 27 more days till spring. So I bet y'all are excited as I am for spring. So make sure to get your warm gear out ready. Back to you, Josh. Thank you for the report, Matthew. Well, we're going to take a quick break. We've got more for you, so stay tuned. It's on us to stop sexual assault. To get in the way before it happens. To get a friend home safe. And to not blame the victim. It's on us. To look out for each other. To, to not, not look, look the, the other way. way. It's on us to stand up. To step in. To take responsibility. It's on us. All of us to, to stop, stop sexual, sexual assault. assault. Learn how and take the pledge at itsonus.org. Welcome back. Now y'all might already know, but there's a Planned Parenthood right around the corner from campus. And we thought it would be a good time to talk about the impact that this company's services have on us Grizzlies because of the recent news that it is being considered for defunding on a national level. Planned Parenthood is a nonprofit organization that does research into and gives advice on contraception, family planning, and reproductive problems. It is the leading providers of high quality affording health care for women, men, and young people, and the nation's largest provider of sex education. They offer and provide several services, including birth control pills and testing for STDs. Now, we will cut to a clip of the CEO, Silly Richards, talking about all the services that Planned Parenthood provides. Hello, I'm Cecile Richards, president of Planned Parenthood Federation of America. Planned Parenthood provides a full range of health care services to millions of women, men, and young people every year, including cancer screenings, birth control, STD testing and treatment, and abortion. And we provide much more than health services. We support millions of people as they build their futures and pursue their goals. The controversy that surrounds Planned Parenthood involves the fact that they are providing abortions to females by taxpayers' money, and this does not sit well with pro-life individuals. However, the pro-choice individuals retort that the abortion services only account for 3% of their health service rendered. So much controversy surrounds this topic, and we have a set a date in a few weeks to talk with the media coordinator from the Planned Parenthood around the corner. So more on this story coming soon. We will now take a quick break and be right back. College happens. You're just gonna watch one more episode. Okay, one more. Or another. It's okay. It's not due until 11.59 p.m. Challenge accepted. Chegg study will help you get your assignments done faster, no matter what's distracting you. Over 90% of students who use Chegg study finish their homework faster and get better grades. 
Leadership, scholarship, creativity, and service are a major component of what is expected of Grizzlies here at GGC. We feel as though it is important to highlight members of the, G of the Grizzly community that best exemplifies one of these four principles. Today we have chosen Flynn to be the Grizzly of the Week. Out of our four pillars at GGC, which one do you think you exemplify the most? Uh, I'll probably say creative, because, you know, I just uh, am creative. Um, but I feel like everybody's creative in their own right. Everybody is all four pillars. But I feel like I'm probably mostly creative just in the way I do things on yeah. a day-to-day -day basis. No, I like, I like your look. You have a hipster look going on. <laughs> I actually like that. Most people come here more professional, but I, I love your look, you know, be you as, uh, as someone said once, right? So in what ways are you a role model to your residents? Uh, like I said, I just try to be an influence. Um, I know I understand everybody's different and not all of us live the same lifestyle. So just in the lifestyle I live, I try to make the right choices and show other people what choices that are best for them in certain situations. Like that. Like that. Cool. But yeah, I just try to be a good influence. Okay. So do you have any advice to anyone that's um, wanting to be an RA in the future? Like, what advice would you give them? Well, I would have to tell them that every day is not the same. So if you come into the job expecting that every day is going to be the same or that your schedule you set at the beginning of the day is going to end up the same at the end of the day, you'd be wrong. So just be flexible and uh, maintain a good positive attitude because you're going to need it. <laughs> yeah, that's really, that's really awesome. I, I, um, I really like how you're hitting on the creativity point because I feel like a lot of times the st uh, Grizzlies or students don't, don't really focus on, on creativity and, and being themselves, being like who you are, you know? So, so kudos to you, Flynn. Um, so if for advice in the future for any um, any grizzly or any uh, incoming student, you know, what, what would you say to any uh, incoming student? That's a good question. That's a good question. Uh, I guess my advice would have to be just follow your intuition because your intuition will tell you to do a lot of things that you may not how do I say, agree with or think is okay. But I've done a lot of things over the past few years that people kind of didn't really look at. Like, uh, they were kind of amazed that I'd done these things. Like, I paint my nails and do a whole bunch of things. But um, at the end of the day, it was just like intuition that told me to do it, and I did it, and I'm happy that I did it. So just listen to that inner voice. That's sweet. Yeah. So with this position, have you learned like any life lessons that you will go forth throughout in life and that you will continue to carry on in practice? Yeah, I'm a big slacker. So uh, coming into this job, it uh, kind of taught me to settle down and actually accomplish things instead of just waiting till the last minute. Don't procrastinate. Yeah, don't I like it. <laughs> don't procrastinate. That is a great life lesson for a lot of people, I think. Um, well, thanks, Flynn, for being here, and uh, we will get your award to you during the week. So Thank you. You're very welcome. Well, that's it for this week's news. Join us next week, and as always, keep, keep growling, growling, Grizzlies. grizzlies.